Hello, everybody. This is just a. If look at, I suppose, that that question around anxiety, uh, it seems to be coming up a lot in the media and social medias, and it's it's out there in the ether at the present moment. And I just wanted to try to clear a couple of issues. Um, and give you a couple of ideas and supports around what exactly is going on here. OK, so the heading of the the title the slide here is the anxious mind superhero or supervillain. And I think that's the, the really the issue that's been coming up for the last while. Uh, it's been described as a villain, so somebody is anxious and that that immediately sort of seems to send off alarm bells and people need to be referred and so on and so forth. And I'm trying to get across the the idea that actually, you know, the anxious mind is is actually normal. It is normal to be anxious. Uh, it's the way that we are made. It's how how our brains were developed and began. So hopefully by the end of, of, of the session that I'm going to do with you here, and there's only five slides, so I'm hoping not to take up too much time. Um, I'm hoping that you will look at it more as as a support and a hero rather than a villain. So humans are designed to be anxious. Um, the biggest issue for the original human being, OK, when they were created, first of all, is uh, are they going to eat breakfast or are they going to be breakfast? So the part of your brain that first is created at, at the moment of conception is the amygdala. And the amygdala has is just based on that issue of survival or not survival. OK, and what prevents them from surviving, uh, and what, what would cause them not to survive. So literally it's black and white, it's left or right. It is, this is the option, okay? What can I do to survive? So a lot of the things that you do automatically, okay, are controlled by the amygdala. So so blinking, okay, or ducking, or, or even running away from something, you know, hitting out at something, uh, screaming or shouting when you're in fear or, or freezing. They're all safety mechanisms that have been designed specifically by your amygdala and that part of your brain, the closest to, you, to your spine. And that part actually controls, and it's the first thing that, that actually controls anything. So it's automatic. Your brain is designed for survival, okay? And it's not designed for rational thought. That part of your brain, the cortex, developed later on, okay? It's bigger, but it's not as powerful as that amygdala part. So the automatic part of your brain is what comes into play when it considers or when the human being considers that they're in danger. And the most important part of it is that it's triggered by perceived threat or perceived danger. So what the brain, the amygdala, thinks is a danger or thinks is a threat, not whether it's an actual threat. I said it's not possible to be rational when you feel that way. The amygdala doesn't allow you to determine, OK, am I 10 percent in danger? Am I 15 percent in danger? Am I 90 percent in danger? Is this an actual threat? No, it doesn't go there at all. It, you know, to use the old phrase, it shoots first and asks questions later. So it gets you ready for survival mode. The physical reactions then that we experience, OK, all of that, uh, you know, tense muscle building up, uh, increasing breathing, you know, the, the breathing much faster, you know, your heart rate coming up, possible sweaty palms uh, or, or cold hands, feeling sick in your tummy, uh, headaches, feeling that you're about to have a heart attack or have to have a stroke. All of those things are because the amygdala has kicked in and because the adrenaline is being pumped into your body. Adrenaline is designed to pump up your muscles. It's designed to uh, get you ready for either running away as fast as you possibly can or putting up the most incredibly strong fight that you can possibly do. So that adrenaline kicks into your body and it's done for that reason. So, but the offset of that or the side effect of that is that once you have been flooded with the adrenaline, there's no place for it to go if you don't do anything, OK? So immediately the amygdala goes, right, we're under threat, floods your body with the adrenaline, and you start feeling all of these things in your stomach and in your brain and your whatever it is. And that is, you know, a, a, 
what that does for you in actual fact is make you think that you're under more threat because you're going, oh God, I, can't, I, I couldn't feel this bad unless there was something bad happening. I must be having a heart attack, I must be having a stroke, I must be... That makes the brain go, oh, yeah, we are under threat. Look, I told you so. And, and it floods you with even more. So it's that automatic system that kind of puts you into a spiral. Too much of anything is probably not good for you. Too much adrenaline in your system over a long period of time is not good for you, okay? Because it needs, you know, it's pumping you up, it's getting you ready, and you need to be doing something with it. If you don't, but you keep on thinking that you need to, it keeps on doing it. It makes you react, not think, okay? You become hypervigilant. You're on red alert all of the time, and you can't be because your brain and your body just can't do that all the time. Constantly sees danger, the threat, even when there's no evidence of a threat or no evidence of a danger, okay? It causes the brain not to be rational about the level of threat. The brain can't problem solve in these conditions. OK, it can't. The logical thinking has gone out the window, so it can't think this thing through. So to a certain extent, if you're feeling that you're uh, having difficulty focusing inside in, you know, the classes that you're now in online or you're feeling that you're not able to, to get your homework done or, or you don't remember anything, you can't remember what you did yesterday. OK, even though you did attend all your classes and you did do all your, your homework, that's normal. OK, it is that part of your brain, the amygdala <laughs> taking over. Uh, and the rational part not. That stuff will come back to you later on. Don't worry about it. But, okay, just for the moment, it's not. Avoidance is the main hallmark of anxiety. So not wanting to do, not wanting to be, not wanting to get up in the morning, not wanting to get focused, not wanting to do the homework, not wanting to do the classwork. That's all part, okay, of being in the, that anxious state, okay? What the body wants is safety. Wants to, so it tries to find anything that will help it to be safe, okay, and needs reassurance that it is safe, okay. So we'll do everything that we can to 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 do that. What can we do to minimise some of the stuff that we're experiencing, or the some of the stuff that you're experiencing, okay? Well, some of these things have to be actually practised beforehand. So the the breathing. I know that we had a number of sessions uh, with somebody before Christmas in relation to, to deep breathing and how you manage to slow that stuff down. And it works for some, it doesn't work for other, others. But it's a little bit like fire drill within the school, okay, or fire drill within your home. The more you practice it, the more automatic it becomes when it is called for. So, you know, the fire alarm goes off, everybody does what they're supposed to do and knows what they're supposed to do. If you practice your breathing, practice deep breathing, practice calming yourself down before you actually need it, then you'll actually do it much better when you do need it. Anyway, the first part is to understand that you are not different. There's nothing medically or psychologically wrong with you, okay? You are being flooded by adrenaline. It's the uh, amygdala that's taking over. So when you're experiencing those kinds of things, okay, unless you do have a medical problem or unless you have it experienced over a long period of time, in which case then maybe you do need to have a, a, um, a chat with your doctor. But in general, for the majority of us, okay, anxiety, stress, as we call it, okay, is normal. All right. But for us to realize what it's doing in our body and where it comes from, that's the most important thing. And then we need to realize that it's happening to everyone, and particularly at this time, okay? Global pandemic, everybody. It's the situation that's wrong, okay? The threat is not just perceived by you and your, your amygdala, but it's perceived by the whole world, okay? So it's out there, it's almost in the ether. It's, it's part of the, the smell that's going around the place. It's a little bit like if everybody was inside in a large swimming pool and then uh, somebody put in a different color dye. Everybody who's in the in the swimming pool is going to get affected by the color, whether they like it or not. Okay, it's 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 in the water. So your amygdala is, in actual fact, your superhero in the sense that it is the one that protects you. It's checking for danger. It's saying this is a threat. This is a threat. We need to do something about it to to help you to survive. So if you can look at your amygdala and anxiety as being a a hero that comes to help you at times when you need it. The problem with this one is that, you know, it's on speed dial and you didn't call it. 
Okay, it's been called up by outside forces to a certain extent, but also you didn't call it up, but it's there. It's it's kind of dialing in itself. Uh, you know, you, so that that's important for you to to be aware of. So all of those emotions, those physical feelings, and even the inability to be able to think clearly are part of what's going on. There's a kind of a cycle that goes on, and that is what you think affects how you feel, and that how you feel affects what you do. So if you think you're under threat, the amygdala clicks in and immediately floods your body with the, you know, the adrenaline. So now you're feeling all of those effects within your body. And that is now going to make you want to do something. And when you go and think or, or do something about it, you know, if you go, oh, yeah, I definitely am in trouble here. I need to uh, get a doctor or I need to, then you're actually affecting the thinking you're thinking negatively and that's flooding you again with more and so on so you need to break that cycle if you can okay what you do affects what you think that affects what you feel so what we are suggesting to you is on the right hand side of this particular slide and that is that when the amygdala floods your body with the adrenaline that's an energy surge and you need to get rid of the energy surge and you need to get rid of that energy surge every day a number of times a day. OK, so get rid of the energy surge two or three or four times a day. Get up from your desk if you get a chance, get up from the, the, the computer. And even if you're just jumping around on the spot, you know, kicking out your legs, kicking out your arms. Uh, if you're going to scream out loud, maybe do that into a pillow or at least warn the, the, the locals or the people in your family that you're going to be screaming. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just that you're going to get rid of all of this, you know, pent up tension, if you want to call it that. Run up and down the stairs if you've got that space. If not, kind of jump up and down on the spot or, or do some dancing or something. You know, all it takes is maybe two, three minutes, OK, of seriously fast and, and furious action. And that will dissipate, that will get rid of that surge of energy. Practice breathing techniques, okay? And we talk about, you know, various different ones, but if you practice just slowing down your breathing, okay, it will slow down your heartbeat. It will slow down that. And that will then affect how you're heating in your body. So, you know, the, the sweating or the, 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 the cold hands, that will now change, will come back to being normal, okay? the oxygen and blood flow will, will return back to its normal and you will, you know, come back into your body in a regular way. So the bad stuff will, will go. But that requires you actually having to, to consciously do that. So you're breathing out for longer numbers than you're breathing in and you're consciously saying, no, there is nothing wrong with me. This is OK and I will be able to cope with this. OK, you need to make a plan and you need to have a plan for your whole day. So the fact that the school runs in the normal school manner and the classes are running in the normal school manner is actually good for your plan. It's creating a plan and a scaffolding for that plan, so routine. But the plan needs to be around sleep and good sleep is, is eight hours. And if you can get sleep before midnight, it's restorative sleep, so it'll actually help you. Um, exercise, again, 40 minutes a day is great if you can get out there. If you, you know get out for a walk in, there, in the fresh air, Really, you do need to be outside getting some fresh air, whether you exercise outside or you just go for a walk, take your dog for a walk or whatever. That's perfectly fine. Get out as well as. But the exercise that can be squats, that can be jumps, that can be star jumps, can be anything that will get your heart beat up, your lungs up. OK, in a positive manner, uh, proper food. So, not, you know, not lots and lots of junk food, lots of sugary stuff. No, try to have, have proper food and try to have the meals at regular times if you possibly can. Connect with people, OK? Connect with friends and really connect, not just kind of Snapchat them or whatever, but visually if you can see them, OK? Yeah, maybe it's going to have to be on a, uh, a video conference or a video phone call, but at least connect in with them. And if you haven't heard from one or two of your, your friends or colleagues or people, classmates, you know, maybe make the phone call, maybe, maybe check in with them just to see how they're doing, uh, because some people will retreat into themselves, you know, at the time. So the routine is hugely important. Getting up in the morning, getting ready for your classes, keep that routine if you possibly can. Uh, that would be really good for you. And it'll help again to, you know, tell the amygdala, no, there is nothing going on here. There's nothing crazy going on. Don't automatically believe the first thought 
okay that comes into your head in relation to what's going on okay so if you're thinking oh you know i, I sent out a message to my friends uh, and nobody responded okay i put up a picture on instagram nobody responded immediately our brain goes into oh what's, what's going on what did i do wrong did i say something wrong is uh, everybody mad at me for something stop it may be a case that they just haven't had time to open it yet or look at it yet or maybe they're you know talking to their parent or or whatever so don't automatically think or don't automatically go with the first thought in your head as i said the amygdala doesn't allow rational thought the first thing that it'll sense into your brain is that you're under threat in some shape form or other so you have to wait a little while distract yourself distract yourself with things like crossword puzzles or jigsaws or, or uh, you know whatever it is that you can do that will take the focus of your attention away even classwork doing what's you know being asked to you in class or even doing the homework that can actually act as a bit of a distraction so if you're told you know i have to do nine you know quadratic equations tonight or i have to draw a diagram for the you know, biology or, or home ec or whatever they just focus on doing that and that can be a distraction that can take the, you know, get rid of the amygdala out of the equation and bring back in your cortex. You know, some people use mindfulness, some people use coloring, some people use meditation. Look, if you can use classwork and homework as being that form of mindfulness, meditation, distraction, that will work. And it has a double benefit in the sense that it also gets the homework out of the way and it gets the classwork out of the way. And so you're going to get you know rewarded for that as well. Last part, okay, don't overthink. The term we use is, is ruminate. If you keep thinking about the situation, thinking about, you know, what's going on, and oh, isn't it, don't, okay? That just has the effect on your feeling. You know, your amygdala will go back into thinking, oh, yes, we're under threat because they're thinking bad thoughts. Yes, we must be, you know, it must be under threat, and all of that stuff will start all over again. Cut down on the amount of media that you're getting involved in, okay? This week and last week have been a lot in relation to leaving certificate and CAOs and all that sort of stuff. Look, the most important thing in relation to you making any decision for the whole of your life, and some of your decisions are going to have to be done under a bit of pressure, is about deciding what are the things that I can control or I have control over and what are the things I don't have control over. So what's happening with the leaving certificate, what they're deciding to do, what colleges are doing, all of that, forget about that. You have absolutely no control over what's going on there. And they're going to change and chop and make up their minds and change their minds five, 10, 15 times. If you stay focused on that stuff and listen to what's going on there, you're just going to be, you know, uh, more anxious all the time. So don't do that. Cut down on the amount of media, the amount of social media, the amount of hype, the amount of speculation, the amount of commentary that's coming in from friends as well, okay? Some of your, your your friends and peers are going to be doing that speculation and sending it even higher in your, in terms of your anxiety. So don't, okay? It turbo boosts the amygdala and we're trying to calm amygdala down. Use visualizations. So pick nice pictures, you know, your, your favorite painting or favorite place to go or even your favorite box of chocolates or, uh, you know, what you, you know, some place or something that you would like to be at the, that particular time to cheer yourself up. Maybe it's a case of watching a, um, you know, a funny episode on television or Netflix or a cartoon or, or, or your favorite book or whatever, anything. OK, listen to nice music. OK, calm, relaxing music, all of that. Hug a teddy bear, anything. Do call a friend. OK, if you're feeling that you're getting quite anxious, do call a friend and tell them. All right. Don't just sort of say hi. Just wondering how you're doing. Just sort of say hi. Feeling a bit anxious. How are you doing? Can you, you know, talk me down from this particular place? As in, you know, just being. And you know, even if it's, you know, you're messing, you're telling jokes to each other. That can help because it'll distract. Okay. It'll change your head. Re-engage. Okay. The sensible, calm part of your brain. Okay. That will act like your sensible friend. So you're kind of going amygdala get out of the way cortex you come back in here and start to you know being reasonable here no this is not the end of okay no i am not going to be attacked by a giant mouse no i am not going to be you know so you have to you know have your your brain needs to get into motion there you also have to be patient with yourself okay build a coping plan and use it okay and that's a coping plan will you will be useful to you for the whole of your life okay OK, resilience, they're talking about that terminology, but I'm talking about how do you cope with things? How do you cope with things changing? How do you cope with things go wrong? 
okay you you know you're out with your friends uh, or you're, you've gone for a drive and then the car breaks down okay and you're in the middle of nowhere and your phone isn't working you don't have reception like how do you cope with those kinds of things all right um so it's about developing a plan and how you manage it you know maybe you do nice things to yourself every now and again okay make a hot chocolate for yourself or make a piece of toast or or offer to make hot chocolate and a toast or for your mom or or who else is in the house you know something that that connects and does a little bit of a connection and also that does something nice for yourself and maybe you'd have a chat you know uh exchange a few words with each other and help to to distract you again most importantly folks for you is that your brain is developing okay there are a number of periods of time there are four or five times in the, in a person's life when the brain actually develops uh, and unfortunately one of those times is when you're in secondary school one is usually kind of the link between primary and secondary and the second one is that time from about 16 or 17 up until your mid 20s okay so your brain is developing uh, and it is you know, at the time that you start moving out of home, start thinking about, you know, setting up yourselves, your future, your life, all of that sort of stuff, those kinds of things are going on in your head. Because your brain is developing, can I ask you please not to get involved in things like alcohol or drugs or nicotine too much, you know, of that sort of stuff. It all affects your developing brain, okay? And it affects them in a bad way. So it's just to try to get you to, to try to stay with yourself and depending on your, your actual natural abilities and you will do well. Your anxious mind is your superhero. If you are in the future walking down in the city center in some, you know, huge, vast city somewhere else in the world or or whatever, and there are dangers. Okay, there are things that are not, you know, not safe. It's your amygdala that will kick in and that will have you watching and being aware of what's happening around you. It is the thing that will, you know, help you to get the hell out of there if you see somebody coming up to you that isn't, um, you know, doesn't have your best intentions in mind. So that part of your brain is, you know, going to come in and help you in the future. It'll save you when you need it. Hopefully you won't ever need it to do that, but it will certainly be coming in there. It's hugely important for you it's just that you know the example i have here is that it's at the wrong party okay you haven't invited it to this one this is a, a different kind of situation that you're in right now so at the end of the day don't be worried anxiety is a normal part okay if you treat it normally and if you follow the few steps that we have outlined in the, in the slides the last part of that slide is just to reference the sources of some of the information that i got and that's from dr jennifer hayes and Dr. Harry Barry, I'm sure you've heard a lot about all of those as time has gone by. Look, mind yourselves, mind each other, stay safe and stay well. Thank you.